Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and this is going to be very special here because I'm going to be reviewing a very popular romantic drama that came out on April 15, 1983, and that is Flashdance. What a feeling. <laughs> Take your passion and make it happen. <laughs> yeah, it's a story about a young girl who's a steel mill welder by day and a flash dancer by night but she dreams to make it all, all the way up to the top as a professional ballerina now yes this is the blu-ray that I picked up at Walmart uh, recently uh, during Black Friday and it came in this wonderful uh, nice slip cover which is basically the, the original movie poster and this is basically the most famous one of them all where we see Jennifer Beals, uh, the star of the film, you know, wearing these sweatshirts. And underneath it all, you could, well, we can't see it much, but you probably see like a bra underneath. Um, which actually started out, uh, in her words, that this was an accident, that her sweatshirt got shrunk in the wash. And she wore it, which leads to that famous scene where she bought to uh, take off her bra and and then later her panties. You know, while she had a sex scene with uh, Michael Norey's character in the film. Well, she even says her response at the end, you "Want some pizza?" <laughs> okay, I, you get it. Um, of course, you can look at the back here. Yes, that famous uh, silhouette, Alex Owens. The scene where you know, she was doing her flash dance, uh, she pulls the strings and all that water splashes on her. Yeah. Does the same here on the on this cover art as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and of course, <laughs> I want to see what it looks like. Uh, but it does have features, um, has a solid transfer, actually the best this movie had ever looked on Blu-ray, so it's actually the best transfer we ever got. It actually has the history of Flashdance, the look of Flashdance, Flashdance music and songs, Flashdance choreography, releasing the Flashdance phenomenon with teaser and theatrical trailer included, so, so you get a lot of that. Unfortunately, there's no interview with uh, Jennifer Beals, so that's a shame. But and then we also learned that uh, uh, one actress um, was no longer with us, but which I think is a shame. But they explain it and how it all came to be. So it's all, it's all there. It, it was indeed one of the most popular films of all time, which was an inspiration to all the music videos that we were getting. I mean, MTV was very popular in the 80s, ever since they launched the channel in 1981. And not only that, but the 80s was, was a, a culture phenomenon at the time, with a lot of uh, dance films that we were getting. I mean, we just had a film called Fame, which was directed by Alan Parker, and then a lot of films had joined in in the league, and it became an inspiration. We, you know, we had films like uh, Footloose that followed, you know, with Kevin Bacon. We had Purple Rain, which had Prince, and that was his first film after you know, doing all these uh, wonderful songs here and there. And all the music videos. And we had um, Dirty Dancing that follows too. Um, we had a lot of uh, films like this. And then there's a lot of breakdancing movies like um, Break In, along with Break In 2, Electric Boogaloo, uh, Body Walk, and uh, so on and so forth. I mean, it was everywhere. <laughs> um, this was also the, the starting point of film producers Don Simpson and Jerry Bookheimer, which 
Two of them went on to go on to do bigger success with films such as uh, Top Gun and as well as Days of Thunder, you know, both of them with Tom Cruise. They also did uh, Crimson Tide uh, as well as um, the Bad Boys films. Well, that is until Don Simpson uh, passed away in 1996 and Jared Bookheimer continues to go on with his entire career. Of course, I know Bad Boys 2 came out in 2003, but they did use his name as a dedication. Um, but yeah, and then uh, we had director Adrian Lyne. Uh, long before he went on to direct films like Fatal Attraction and Jacob's Ladder, the original Jacob's Ladder. Yeah, because we got a remake recently. Um, he was directing uh, TV commercials in the UK. And probably the most famous one of them all was a, a jeans commercial that inspired to do this film, right here. Because I know originally it was going to be directed by Brian De Palma, but he went on to do S Scarface. And also they were going to get uh, David Cronenberg to direct this, which that would have been pretty interesting. I mean, because <laughs> he's a Canadian director and they pretty much would have shot it in Canada seeing that the film was set in Pittsburgh. He had to work on another film that he has to do, so that's why he wasn't available. At this rate, he was working on Videodrome and, and the movie based on the Stephen King novel, The Dead Zone, so that's why he couldn't do it. And yes, uh, the film got panned by critics, including Roger Ebert, who's basically notorious for giving negative reviews to some dance theme films like again Footloose and Dirty Dancing come to mind. Well, probably his most uh, putrid um, criticism that he gave was when he said, and you're gonna love this, Jennifer Beals shouldn't feel bad. She is a natural talent. She is fresh and engaging here and only needs to find an agent with natural talent for turning down scripts. Yeah. He even put this on his most hated list, too. It's ridiculous. But same goes with the, the rest of the professional critics out there. And not only that, but Rotten Tomatoes gave it 35%. So, yeah, I don't. I know, I know. It's not a perfect film, I'll give you that. I mean, yes, the story may be, may be preposterous at times, and I know it, it could be corny or any other. It's not, it's not what we expected, but I still enjoy the film for, for what it's worth, okay? So, and seeing that the movies are rated, I, I can definitely see what the film was going for. Of course, they're going to have, like, some nudity in the film, they're going to have some sex scenes. I mean, even though for the most part it's just going to be about, you know, a woman that's going for her dream. Then we begin to see about, you know, her family and and then of course there's also criticism involving the age differences between Beals and Nori. Well, it's true because uh, for those who don't know, Jennifer Beals was incredibly young. She was only 18 years old at the time and and Nori was 36. So he's the oldest and which I don't know people may think of it as as pedophilia or something which I'm sorry but, which I, I know it's it's hard for me to, to say this. Um, it's amazing too because um, Michael Eisner, um, who was uh, the CEO of Paramount Pictures at the time, yeah, before he went straight to Disney, before he was replaced by Bob Iger, um, <laughs> you're gonna love this because there's a story that's explained where they were gonna cast uh, not only her but they were gonna cast uh, Demi Moore and Leslie Wing joining in, trying to see who would fit the role the most of the character Alex Owens. Um, 
they had some different stories to tell. It explains that Michael Eisner asked the women's secretaries at the studio to select their favorites uh, for the choices of screen tests that they're given. And what do you know? I mean, that's that's how they chose um, Beals. And then we led to the film screenwriter uh, Joe Esterhaz, yeah, one of the writers of the film, who explains that in Eisner's words that 200 of the, mo the most macho men on the lot, teamsters and gaffers and grips, I want to know which of these three young women you most want to fuck. <sighs> yep, who would have thought Eisner would say that, but that's what I found out um, on the info here you know, online and everywhere. Wow. <laughs> okay. But the film did become a huge success. I mean, for its seven million budget, it only made you're gonna love this two hundred and one point five million dollars. So it it just ran through its entire run um, through the course of nineteen eighty three, joining in with other successful films going around, even though we were getting a lot of sequels. Even 3D films too. So, <laughs> and not only that, but the film was a cultural phenomenon too. I mean, the fact that we had a <laughs> a Charlie Brown special because Peanuts creator Charles M. Schultz actually saw this movie and he thought this would be a good idea to do his own parody of Flashdance with joining in with other uh, dance theme. Uh, movies and, and even music videos for that matter for that style so they even had to use a uh, <laughs> a dance choreographer um, to do all these moves and it's, it worked <laughs> so I can see why you know this was so popular um, not to mention this was actually inspired by a true story because um, the real life uh, Alex Owens was actually Marine Martyr, which it's a story about which in real life uh, she was a construction worker and welder by day and, and a dancer by night at a strip club in Toronto. And she too had um, entered a prestigious uh, dance school so that way she can make it to the top. So which also led to controversy too where they had a, a suit against the filmmakers so that's where they had writer Tom Haley you know coming up with the original story about about this woman and yes there's even another controversy too because it also joins the connection was that even Jennifer Lopez was uh, was actually doing a homage uh, to the film which then she actually sued her for for the rights, so that's when Paramount decided to pay royalties with Sony, you know, for that particular rights to the to the tribute. Yeah. I mean, of course, even Deadpool 2 actually uh, <laughs> did an inspiration to that as well, you know, with the flying bullets and stuff. Okay, okay. I know, I know, I'm giving too much information, but I just wanted to explain it. Anyway, let's get to the review. It stars Jennifer Beals, Michael Nuray. Elias Skarsla, Sonny Johnson, Kauti Hefner, Lee Ving, Ron Kabasatos, Belinda Bayer, Malcolm Donare, Phil Bruns, Lizzie Lee Flippin, Cynthia Rhodes, you know, went on to do other films such as Runaway and of course Dirty Dancing as I mentioned. Also did some uh, dancing and all this other stuff. She played a role in the movie Staying Alive with John Travolta, the sequel to Saturday Night Fever. Liz Segal and Marie Jahan in an uncredited role. French actress. It's written by Tom Haley who came up with the story. Joining in with Joe Esterhaz. With producers Don Simpson, Jared Bookheimer, Tom Jacobson, Linda Rosen Ops. And also the two uh, film producers from Polygram, Peter Goober and John Peters. And it's directed by 
Adrian Lyon. The movie begins when we meet an 18-year-old steel mill welder named Alex Owens, who's played by Jennifer Beals, who lives in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at a converted uh, warehouse apartment that she owns and joins in with her dog. So, basically her dream was to become a professional ballerina but she has no former dance training so I know she has to practice but she does actually work as an exotic dancer at a local bar and grill called Mulby's which she joins in with all of her flash dancers you know to perform their their sexy dance routines such as the most famous scene of them all um, which is of course I show you right here on, on the slipcover where she just pulls the strings and sits on the chair and lean back and then all the water splashes on her and then she continues to do her routine um, anyway they all perform their nightly cabaret I mean there's even a scene the joined in by other flash dancers uh, including the Tina Tech who's played by uh, Sophia Rhodes uh, probably the most uh, another famous scene was where she was like the baseball umpire, you know, wearing that uh, mask. You know, you know how they wear that protection mask. You know, so in case if the ball hits them, you know, they'll, you know, at least they'll be protected. I mean, once they catch it by their catcher's mitt, that sort of thing. And she does uh, this amazing uh, dance routine, and she even does a backflip. That was really incredible. And all of that. So, okay. So, lacking family values here and there, um, Alex does uh, bond with um, one of her co workers uh, at Mulby's, which is a. which is Janine, who's played by Sonny Johnson. And the actress who played her, by the way, uh, passed away a year after the film was released. Yeah. So, very sad about what happened. Um, but yeah, she's a waitress, um, but was training to become a figure skater, while her boyfriend, who's a short order cook named Richie, played by Kyle T. Hefner, uh, wants to become a stand-up comedian. So, see, now we know that this movie follows everyone's dreams. So, I love that. Uh, but one night, uh, we meet uh, the owner of the steel mill, worker Nate <clears throat> but then one night we meet uh, the owner of the steel mill work where, where all the workers join by and that's where she works named Nick Hurley who's played by Michael Nuray that Alex suddenly uh, catches the eye on him um, seeing that we learn that uh, that she is one of um, his employees um, that's where Nick suddenly begins to pursue her job, and at first Alex turns down, but was basically approached by Johnny C, played by Lee Ving, who wants Alex to dance at his nearby strip club. She refuses. She refuses. But by that point on, um, Alex decided to. Uh, seeking some counsel from her mentor named Hannah Long played by Lilia Scarlissa who happens to be a retired ballerina so she tries to apply at the Pittsburgh uh, Conservatory of Dance and, and Repertory so that way she'll be able to do her audition as a ballerina dancer but it also leads to bigger problems here and there where Janine was trying her best to, to become a figure skater and, and continues to, to practice as hard as she can but sadly she failed after that one attempt and she had to wait till next year which then later on she wants up becoming a Zanzibar stripper because she had no choice she needed the money really bad. And that's where uh, Alex found out that she was dancing nude. 
and it led to that uh, protest. Because she got defeated um, during the during the ice skating rink, and before that even happened, Richie and Alex were also assaulted by Johnny C and his bodyguard uh, Cecile. You know, and which after that, uh, Nick and and Alex had, had eventually um, performed a relationship with each other for a while. Which can also lead to problems too later on. Like they just couldn't get along at times. Or there's even a scene in the movie where <laughs> where they were just having dinner and we found out that uh, Nick actually had his ex wife and well that's what led her to be upset and that's where she throws a rock straight into the window of his apartment and where it slaps him and all this other stuff, a lot of fights that sort of situation um, but anyway that scene where <laughs> she was actually wearing a suit but then when she was taking it off well you can see the suit underneath where it just it took off all the, the sleeves and all that, so underneath it all, you could tell she was naked under there. <laughs> it was actually meaning for a charity function that was happening, so. And then um, it's also resulting on other failed dreams that she was going for. Like, we're not so sure if she'll be able to, to get the addition or, or so. And then we learned about the sudden death of Hannah because she passed away but no matter what she was doing she she had to continue to go through it with her addition and and well this is where she finally makes it to the top when she finally gets to do her dance routine in front of all the judges around now this is pretty rare to see in films where sometimes when you kind of fucked up the first time around. You'll probably be disqualified, but but in this scene alone, I thought this was really interesting that she got to do it again. So, like, you know, just to start one more time while playing the song "What a Feeling" by Arena Cara, uh, by Arena Cara, where she got to do that amazing dance routine. Uh, join join in with all the break dancing scenes because that's inspired by what what happened when when she was going outside she was doing all these uh, she's beginning to see all these break dancers around and all of that she she even does a flying leap up in the air and she does all these spins and everything and the judges had wowed her and then finally she got the part. So, what a feeling, all right. So now she joins in and and uh, that wonderful scene where where Nick suddenly uh, brings in a bunch of uh, roses and and Alex just uh, just ran straight to him and you know they just jump up and lift her and. They agreed to get her when they found out that she got the part, so that's cool. So it's like an amazing romantic uh, ending right there. And I love that. Well, the film has some flaws in it. I mean, yes, the writing could have been a bit better as, as it goes around. I mean, the romance could have worked so well, too. And it can be a little corny at times and here and there. And it could get over dramatic at times too, but that's just the whole idea of the story. But I do think it's amazing and inspiring story about having to follow your dreams, you know, trying to make it to the top, you know, even if you have to struggle many times to to get to the part about what they're going for. I mean, and and it's not just her. I mean, it also follows again the. All of her friends, you know, they want to become big too. They want to be popular. They want to, you know, earn their fame. 
you know, to, to become more professional and, and ever before. I mean, that's what it is. Um, but I thought the cast was great. I mean, Jennifer Beals um, was a natural beauty, and she still is. I, I thought she was beautiful for the part to play the role of Alex Owens. I mean, who would have thought that a woman at that age can actually uh, make a difference? But they sure did. And I think she's a very underrated actress, too. Uh, no doubt. I mean, she went on to do a lot of different roles in her career. I mean, I, I think Flash Dance was one of her most famous one of them all. And, and even though she didn't do um, all of her dance moves, I mean, I think she only did a few dancing scenes, but the rest of it is mostly the dance sequences coming from an actress named, um, from an actress, uh, Marine uh, Jahan, a French actress, so she did all of that. Meanwhile, the climax scene where she's about to get the parts, they play the song What a Feeling, or Flashdance What a Feeling by Irene Cara, and this is where she does the flying leap up in the air, which they use a gymnast uh, named Sharon Shapario to do that, and then they had a, a break dancer. Yeah, whereas this is kind of pretty embarrassing, but having to to wear a wig and those leotards to make it look exactly like uh, like she was uh, doing that. Yeah, plus the leg roamers too. Um, but I thought that was really uh, interesting, it, and it was actually done by a break dancer named Crazy Legs. Yeah. Um, so it's cool. Um, but I love that scene. Um, I also love Symphony Rose. She actually did her own dancing, by the way. Michael Nore wasn't bad either. I, I thought he was uh, excellent for his role that he had. Um, I didn't mind the, the chemistry between the two. Uh, Alex and, and Nick. I mean, yes, there were problems here and there. And I know... People were pretty aware by the age differences, but other than that, um, I could definitely see it click. I mean, it takes a while to get to it. I mean, Kyle T. Hefner was actually pretty funny at times uh, when, when he wants to do a stand-up, seeing that he's a short order cook. Uh, there's even a scene where the uh, the restaurant owner was like was actually punching his guts because he was very nervous but in the end you know he made it all the way through um, I know um, and Sonny Johnson which you know, no longer with us but when um, she wanted to make it big to become a figure skater considering she's a waitress and all that um, kind of felt bad for her because of the fact that she was struggling a lot I mean, no matter what she was doing, but I think the biggest mistake was having to um, become a stripper at at the Zenza Bar uh, Strip Club. However, um, with the story alone, um, I love all the dance scenes in the film. I thought it really worked. I love the soundtrack. I mean, especially the song Maniac that was uh, sung by Michael Cimbello. Uh, I love that scene because we get to see uh, Alex Owens, you know, doing her uh, dance routine, a lot of practice. She's like dancing like a maniac like that while the song plays. She's a maniac, maniac on the floor. And she dances like she's never danced before. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then... Yeah, she's, she was doing that while, while the dog was watching, and then after that she was drinking Diet Pepsi. <laughs> she was doing all these uh, practicing while she was watching a, a ballerina film here and there. <laughs> she accidentally spilled her Diet Pepsi. <laughs> okay. Um, I find it interesting, too, because the song was actually going to be originally written for... <laughs> 
You're going to love this. A horror film called Maniac from 1980. Yeah, the original Maniac. Uh, not the one with Elijah Wood. But they had to change the lyrics uh, for this movie. So, good noise. <laughs> I mean, good idea. Um, and we also learned that uh, it did win an Academy Award for the Best Original Song for Flashdance, uh, What a Feeling. Yeah, that's the title. That song by Reen Kara. And I love the song too, and they really work. Um, and yes, I guess I could also mention that there, there are other scenes too where they were working out. You know, Alex and along with her friends, she was just working out. I love that scene. And then I, I, another scene was that uh, Alex was already trying to, to make it big. I mean, she was suddenly part of an act that she was doing. You know, they were filming it too. Another uh, sequence where eventually we'll have a lot of epileptic seizures for, for those who, who have epilepsy. Which I thought looks really cool, but yeah, it'll probably get to you. Of course, the score was also done by Giorgio Water, so he provided uh, some of the music here and there. While well, you have the soundtrack, and but in, in a way, I love Flashdance. It's a good movie. It was a box office success. It was a smash. I mean, inspired by a lot of films that follow in the in the eighties. And you know what? I'll take it. So. Hey, I've seen this movie uh, when I was a kid. I mean, I actually, I remember, uh, I remember they rented this uh, on home video a lot, and I remember watching this on TV. And um, I also uh, remember having the soundtrack for the yeah, it was on vinyl, which mom and dad bought a long time ago, I think. That has all these songs. So that's cool. Um, I, I find it hard to believe they were going to do a sequel to this, but that never happened. So. Um, anyway, um, and I thought Adrian Lyon did a fine job directing this. This was his first film, and it really shows. I mean, it's had some beautiful uh, direction, some amazing cinematography here and there. Um, so I can see why, you know. People love it. So okay. So anyway, that's um, Flash Dance, and and I give the movie three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.